The world's population is expected to reach nearly 10 billion people by 2050. That kind of growth will place a tremendous amount of stress on our landscape. The stress comes from competing demands, the need for both food and energy to serve a growing planet. When land not naturally suited for agriculture is used to raise corn or soybeans, erosion, soil degradation, and water problems emerge. And ironically, the quest for additional energy often finds prime agricultural land-raising crops for fuel rather than food. But there is an alternative that restores balance. It creates a new sustainable energy industry, manages livestock and land resources better. Plus, it delivers clean water and new habitat. One of the important aspects of what Rudy Raceline is trying to do is not only to preserve the land for the future, but also in showing people ways that they themselves can put these practices into use on their own farms. At the center of it all is anaerobic digestion, which has tremendous untapped potential in the U.S. Anaerobic digestion is a technology that's been used for many years and is available now. Germany has more than 10,000 anaerobic digestion facilities, generating power to nearly 10 million homes. The opportunity is greater in U.S. farm country, where an estimated 8,200 dairy and swine operations could support anaerobic systems, creating a new multi-billion dollar sustainable energy industry. Anaerobic digestion naturally breaks down organic matter in an oxygen-free environment. A byproduct is methane-rich biogas, which can be converted to renewable natural gas, chemically identical to fossil natural gas. It can be used as transportation fuel or injected into the natural gas grid system. The remaining solids can be used as natural fertilizer, the water for irrigation. This process allows us to capture the energy that the animal didn't use in the feed and convert that into a, renew a renewable energy. In addition to the renewable energy that we capture, we're in effect catch capturing all the emissions from the breakdown of manure, so that's very positive. Horizon One involves a unique partnership with Smithfield Foods Hog Production Division to convert manure from nearly two million hogs to renewable natural gas. The $180 million project will move manure into covered lagoons. But this process allows us to capture the energy the animal didn't utilize in making pork and turn that into a renewable fuel that has obvious benefits. In addition, while capturing that energy value, we're capturing all the other emissions from the breakdown of that manure, so we're reducing the emissions that leave the farm. The biogas is piped to a facility that cleans it of impurities like carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, and water, upgrading it to renewable natural gas. The clean gas is then compressed in an adjacent system before being injected into the natural gas pipeline system. The integrated system to clean and compress the gas was engineered, installed, and commissioned by Raceline and Associates, the worldwide leader in unitized and pre-assembled systems Rudy Raceline founded in 1990. The opportunity to monetize renewable energy, that just increases, number one, that farmer's ability to provide for their family, but also bolster the tax base and other benefits to the community. The environmental benefits include odor control, reduced greenhouse gas emissions, and eliminating rainfall effects from treatment systems. Horizon 2 supplements the hog manure feedstock with biomass from land converted to native grasses and forbs to produce more renewable natural gas. This vision creates an economic and environmental model from a new energy crop, especially for land considered highly erodible or marginal. The number of ecological benefits, environmental benefits you get from that are outstanding. Horizon 2 seeks to generate revenue in ways that uses land to its fullest potential, sequestering carbon, cooling the atmosphere through transpiration and evaporation, thanks to the amazing root systems of native prairie. Prairies differ very much in character. These prairies have tended to be cut up and plowed and cultivated. They didn't realize the intrinsic biological richness and integrity of this community 
tall grass prairie once covered 170 million acres in North America. Today, less than 4% remains. And they're disappearing very rapidly, and that really changes the whole natural balance of the whole northern hemisphere. Like so many things in life, we're really beginning to realize the benefit of the prairies now that they're nearly all gone. Native prairie offers bountiful ecological, wildlife, and economic benefits that can actually improve our quality of life. Prairie gives us so many what we like to call ecosystem or ecological services. Prairies support at least half of the state's pollinator diversity. And without that, the reproduction of plants and what that means to all the animals that depend on them, that would be broken. The water storage, the water filtration, the soil erosion prevention. You know, these grasslands have the ability to absorb up to an eight inch rainfall. The amount of fertilizers that are going into our streams, much of that could actually be prevented by having strips or large areas that are surrounded by prairies. Horizon 2 lays the foundation to restore native prairie and all the benefits it provides by establishing financial incentives for landowners. Utilizing native grass on marginal land, harvested in a sustainable manner that creates ecological services and benefits, but also produces an energy crop that can be utilized to make energy. Raceline Alternative Energy and Smithfield are collaborating to do just that at Ruckman Farm in northern Missouri, where the project's first renewable natural gas produced from hog manure is entering the pipeline. Native grasses have been planted on more than 200 acres at Ruckman Farm, 700 acres at Valley View Farm, and another 1,000 acres are underway at several other farms in cooperation with Smithfield Foundation and the Environmental Defense Fund. The collaboration seeks to promote native prairie as a biomass that is a financially and ecologically viable alternative for land that is hilly, highly erodible, or land that borders streams and rivers where agriculture crops should not be planted. That prairie biomass is awesome as a carbon source because all that, those nutrients are, have translocated below ground. The revenue potential is enhanced by regulatory incentives to create renewable fuel and improve air quality. The Federal Renewable Fuel Standard established renewable identification numbers. A RIN is proof that a gallon of RNG has been used as vehicle fuel and the California-based Low Carbon Fuel Standards Program grants an LCFS credit for each metric ton of CO2 emissions reduction. There are vibrant markets where RINs and LCFS credits can be sold. This layered revenue from nutrient recovery, water quality improvement, wildlife habitat, and renewable natural gas would provide financial viability for a virtual pipeline to transport compressed natural gas to a common interconnect point. Plus, the one-time cost of establishing native grasses on marginal land is much lower than the annual economic expense of planting corn or soybeans. It would definitely make the prairie strips an, another alternative revenue source for the farm. And if you can add on, in addition to sort of that tradable good in terms of prairie biomass, if you can start adding on credits for improved water quality or sequestered carbon, if you can layer sort of markets such that a farmland with prairie strips is much more profitable than farmland without it. The deep and diverse root systems of native plants pull water into the soil and reduce flooding. It preserves the topsoils, nourishes them, ties up carbon, which could otherwise contribute to global warming, and really contributes to the biological richness and integrity of this community. Native plants greatly reduce runoff and significantly reduce soil erosion. Rudy is looking for the best formulas to keep nitrogen from flowing out, to preserve water, to preserve the ecological balance of prairie lands. The project shows how using assets that are generally taken for granted as unproductive, livestock manure and highly erodible land, can actually be both economically and ecologically beneficial. It's a paradigm shift for energy production, the environment, and wildlife they can add to the bottom line of a farm operation and actually diversify farm income by putting a farmer into multiple industries. Right now he grows food. 
In the future, he could be growing food, producing energy, and managing landscape. We've been doing things the same way for a lot of years, and it's time that people stood back and said, you know, maybe there's a better way to do it. The better way, at its full potential, will create truly sustainable energy and tens of thousands of jobs in a new industry. The better way delivers new habitat, clean water, and begins to reverse the huge Mississippi River Delta dead zone because 30 million acres of new prairie will prevent fertilizer runoff. This is our vision in action. Join us on our journey.